Welcome back to PTV's The Performers, the show where we explore the music scene of North Shore, Massachusetts, by hosting local artists for a performance and interview to find out how they've made music into a hobby, side hustle, or a successful career. I'm your host, Maddie Wan, and this week our guest is the front woman of Dis and Dap, Sister D. Hi. Thanks for having me, Maddie. Of course. Thanks for coming in. Sure. sure. <laughs> uh, so Dis and Dat is a uh, very active and um, long-established band. Just for some background, you and your husband... Uh, first formed the band in the early 2000s? Yes, um, around 2000, 2001, um, we formed the band then, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. And just uh, for some accolades, what was your background? Were you, did you grow up in a musical family? Oh, yes. Yeah. So for me, uh, um, my background, um, I started playing uh, music with my father, touring with my father. Both sides of my family are musical, but um my father is a very accomplished uh, steel pan player. And um, like if you're into sci-fi movies, you check out Brother from Another Planet. He did the soundtrack to that movie. And I started touring with him, um, I think when I was 13, I did my first tour, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So young. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's an amazing experience to, be, to have as a kid. Oh, yeah. Um, so you've kind of proven yourself as a producer and, and a band arranger, and your husband has a couple of Grammy nom nominations, I believe. Yes. Um, he's been nominated four times um, with Black Uhuru, wow. which is a pretty foundation uh, reggae group, and uh, he's also played with um, on lots of re uh, foundation reggae songs that you've heard, like if you're into mm -hmm. reggae, you've probably heard Fever mm -hmm. by Tana Saw. He's the, the drummer on that, and... Uh, a lot of Sugar Minot stuff, so wow. yeah, he has the he has the a lot of the reggae background and me in the steel pan, you know. So sure, like a, that's the this and that right there. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> do you still um, do you still produce now with other oh, bands, or yeah. is it just your own? Yeah, um, right now um, I just finished producing um, an album for Zorro, who's a South African artist that lives in Spain. Mm -hmm. Um, I've produced two albums for him. I'm producing one for an artist uh, in, in Ghana, and um, I've uh, produced a few for uh, local artists uh, here, Aquarius, a um, few others, you know, so uh, we work with um, people all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, let's, let's dive into your music. Okay, um, okay. The first song we're listening to is Positivity. Yes. Yeah. We move in positive, positive, yeah. Whoa. Positive, positive. We move in positive, positive, yeah. Yeah. Here we positivity, but negativity. Give me the liberty. Can you feel me? One. Watch your wicked way. We are going to give thanks and pray. Hey, positivity, we burn negativity. Tell you. Give me the liberty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you feel me? Watch your wicked way. It's all right, turn over. We, we are going to give thanks and pray. You're messing with my vibe. Messing up my vibe. One. Galang. We don't live so. We don't move so. Hold your wicked so, I hold your fat so. Oh, 
video too thank you thank you thanks um to peabody tv for the great shot <laughs> yeah know? shout out shout out to nick <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so great okay well i can't wait to hear you live oh uh, yeah uh, live is always you know looking at the video you know it's but then you know live performance the video is live also yeah but you know um li- you know just seeing a whole show as opposed to, to one thing it's like a whole experience absolutely i feel like that yeah um would you say this is more of your uh, a more traditional reggae song? Yeah, this one is uh, pretty much a classic roots type of uh, reggae song. Mm-hmm. The the style, the lyrics, everything is pretty much a classic reggae song. Yeah. yeah. And then the that theme of positivity. I mean, it's a it's the clear theme of this song. But how does that kind of um, stem from like reggae music? How do you you know? Well, um, originally, not originally, I wouldn't say originally, but a lot of reggae music is about positivity and spirituality. Mm -hmm. Some of it can even be classified as uh, kind of gospel-y, you know, know, that type of music. So uh, the religion, Rastafarian religion, Mm -hmm. you know, they they come from... um, the roots, reggae, the Naya Bingi, and most of the lyrics are all positive, uplifting, you know, type of songs as opposed to the dance party thing. So sure. that uh, this song is is pulling from that part of you know reggae from the from the positive from the Rastafarian, like the giving, the positivity, liberty, you know, yeah. that type of you know good living, positive living. So. Mm-hmm. That's um, something that I always try to portray and I always try to live. 
And I try to, you know, put it out there in my music also for other people to pick up on it. Because, you know, one, um, one thing about positivity, when you're around it, it's very contagious. Mm. So I try to make everyone catch it, too. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds like I'm like a a real experience to yeah. have live. Oh, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And in, even through the video, I'm like, I felt that immediately. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm like smiling and dancing, and uh, I'm just you're sitting here in this yeah. tiny little room with you. <laughs> Appreciate um, it. So I, that, that transfer is even uh, electronic. Even through the screen, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's yes. powerful. Um, can you speak to the difference of your sound live and recorded and when you work as a producer like how do you um keep that kind of uh contagious feeling alive okay so uh live is something you know you, a lot of times you can't really recreate mm-hmm. that you know that feeling that spur of the moment it's always going to be different to the recorded version i feel like the recorded version is always tamer Sure. You know, because you you want to you take your time and you're like, oh, this part and that part, and you mm-hmm. you know you just put it together, which is great, you know. And it's I love that's another passion of mine besides playing is producing and arranging and music and stuff like that. So that part, like you, you spend a lot of time really trying to get it as perfect and great sounded as as you know as you can. But live, it's just the raw, gritty, right in your face, you know, yeah. you know, and um. They're both they're both great in their own way, but I feel like um, live you know we'll, uh, the live performances always catch people more because it's just the feeling of being right there, and feeling the the drums and the, everything right in your in your totally. soul yeah yeah you know so they both have their you know their their goods you know their good points and yeah they I feel there's no bad points to it, the, you know so for the producing. Lots of hours, like mm. of just constantly fixing and changing, and sometimes to a point where, like, okay, someone has to tell me, like, you don't need to change it anymore. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> keep, you know, you keep criticizing. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to re. You know, I'm the queen of redoing and remaking. You know, sometimes really in a, in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> but live, like, you just have to go out there and do it. Mm. And then also, you know, the feedback from the audience, you know, yeah. it gives us a whole different thing than just you in the studio or you with the band members or whatever. It's different feeling because that feedback from the audience is really a big, big thing, a, a big factor in the music itself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah, you get the crowd into it. You run that back again, do the yeah. chorus eight times and then yeah. heat it up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's great. Um So speaking of your band's specific sound, let's listen to the next track. Um, This one is called Reggae and Steel Pan. Yeah. I said we in a straight line. 
I was glad we got to see a little more of that steel pan action in this shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Um, Nick had this uh, anecdote. He, was, he called this the ballad of dis and that. <laughs> can, you, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on the background? Of Probably that's a good <laughs> thing because that's exactly the song. is talking about exactly what we mm. do. We mix reggae with the steel pan. Yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's the the gist of the song. The two, you know, two different cultures. They're both Caribbean, but there's little different. Every Caribbean island has their own, you know, different identity of things. Though we we do a lot of things alike and listen to a lot of similar music, eat similar foods and things like that. Sure. But each island has their own identity and their own, you know, sort of take on whatever music it is they have. And um, this and that blends those two, the Jamaican and the Trinidadian. Mm. So this song is basically about that. And that's the name of the band. Everything comes from yeah. that. The two, <laughs> you know, the <laughs> reggae and the steel pan. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Both of those alive. Yes. Separately, but together. But together, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. 
Um, how does that how does that reflect in your experience um, in New England? Well, um, in New England, I, I, I guess it's pretty much the same. Um, first of all, I get uh, di- I guess because I'm a, a woman, people you know they're like, "Well, she plays a steel drum," you, you know. I mean, for me, it's like you know just a way of life. So I've always mm-hmm. been doing it, but uh, we uh, there's not. Too many, you know, I'm sure there is, uh, groups of reggae and steel pan in New England. Mm. So, you know, when people see it and they, you know, um, they really like our original music, they like the rhythms of the steel pan, and then, you know, we also add in congas and all types of rhythm and stuff. And um, we get a really pretty good reaction around New England. Um, People follow, we have a pretty good following, and, um, you know, they... They support us, so mm-hmm. you know it's a it's good. It's yeah. good, yeah. <laughs> That's great. I'm, I mean, I'm sure New England needs a little extra uh, lessons in reggae. Oh <laughs> you yeah, know, keep that alive. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, let people experience that. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so we got a taste of your influence from different genres of Caribbean music. Mm-hmm. Then we got a personal look at your experience with the steel pan and mm-hmm. your relationship with your husband and business partner. Mm-hmm. This last song delves more into your history with an even more danceable, instrumental, and hip-hop adjacent lyrics and yeah. flow. So let's listen to Vibes. Okay. <laughs>
fun. So fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your band looks like you guys have yeah. a really great time <laughs> yeah, together. We have fun, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I can just feel like seeing that performed live, I would be up there dancing. Oh, Do you yeah. have a, like a favorite memory of performing that with a like, specific crowd? Uh, yes. Just recently, because this song has actually just been released this past year. Okay. Uh, on our latest um, album, uh, Foundation. And we just did a show in um, uh, in Woodstock, New York, with Third World. It's a pretty famous reggae group, and uh, it was a sold out show. And uh, we did this song, and the audience just went nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was really nice. Yeah, there was um, a a lyric in there talking about twenty year, twenty years later, we still around. Yeah, is that kind of just speaking on like, on your, the band on yeah. you know. And then just the the whole vibe of, because, you know, uh, sometimes music try, tends to try to change a little bit. And then, you know, there's been, like, different styles of reggae, different kinds of, but then it all comes back to the foundation. <laughs> you know, sure. It's still around. That's, you know, basically we're still around, the music is still around, you know, and that's what that's, you know, leading to. Yeah. yeah. It's adapting, but it doesn't change too yes. much. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. Um, okay, so I have to ask. Mm-hmm. Um, you're talking about basement parties and <laughs> DJ Kenny. <laughs> Who is DJ Kenny? <laughs> DJ Kenny, oh my goodness. So DJ Kenny was actually a friend of my father's, and um, I didn't even know he was really a DJ. I just knew him as coming around. And then when I was old enough to go to parties, like, yeah, I used to party a bit. And there used to be these basement parties um, that would, they call them after parties, Mm -hmm. you know. (laughs) They would start, like, when the club is over Mm -hmm. and then go to, like, 8 in the morning. And the DJ (laughs) at the party was DJ Kenny. Amazing. Yes, DJ (laughs) Kenny. And if you ask anybody, like, you know, maybe 20 years ago about basement parties in Boston, DJ Kenny, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's so great. Yeah. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's He's going to be happy when he sees this. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out DJ Shout Kenny. Shout out to DJ Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dine. <laughs> That's so fun. Um, okay. So do you, have, um, do you have any upcoming shows that you can oh, let yeah. uh, your fans know about? Sure. So um, we have, uh, we play in downtown um, Seaport area, Boston, at a great new spot called Grace by Nia. We're going to be there December 8th. Um, we're going to be in Gloucester on December 14th at Machaca. And um, uh, let's see, another, I'm trying to think of the north sh- the local shows. Yeah. The 28th of January, we're going to be on Plum Island at the Beach Coma. Oh, cool. Yes. Um, so, you know, just check at this and that band, and, you know, you'll see. But those are the next, uh, the closest ones, local ones that we have coming up. Great, great. Um, well, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thanks again, Peabody TV, <laughs> the yes. city of Peabody. You know, um, just coming from the, the iFest, Peabody is how we got into this whole thing, you know, and uh, hopefully next year it doesn't rain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> we'll be, so tragic. We'll be out there again, yeah. yeah. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Um, and thank you all for listening. Please let us know where we – oh, um – can you please let us know where we can find you on socials? Yes, you can. So um, if you want to go like Facebook, IG, um, uh, what's the other one? Twitter? Twitter. Uh, um, X now. No, no, TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> oh, TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at this and that band, and that's at D-I-S-N-D-A-T-B-A-N-D. If you want to find our music, like on um, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, you have to search Sister D and the Dis and That Man. So that's S-I-S-T-A-D-E-E and the Dis and That Man. So that's where you'll find, because sometimes there's been a few uh, confusions. They just search Dis and That Man, mm-hmm. and you won't find them. Um, you'll find some other stuff. But if you search, if you're looking to buy, stream, download our music, Sister D and the Dis and That Man. Great, yes. great. Keep an eye out for uh, new content. And yes, we have uh, working shows. on another um, album now that um, we previously released, and you know me had to remix it. I wasn't sure. happy with it, but you guys are gonna love this album. It's coming out 
This year is called Caribbean Soul, and we remade a lot of 70s, 80s, and some 90s soul, hip-hop, R&B music over awesome. in a reggae style. Okay. So look out for that one, Caribbean Soul. Cool. Yeah. Looking forward to mm-hmm. it. Um, thank you so much for making time to come in. Thank you. And uh, that's it for this episode of The Performers, and it's a wrap on our season. Thanks for tuning in, and keep making music.